All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so the Lord told me to um, circle back. Um, I don't know, maybe, what was it, a week or two ago? He had me give an exhortation to teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, to teachers um, to be teaching on discipleship more. And there was a handful of um, bullet points under the umbrella of discipleship. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm taking some water. I should have done that before I hit record. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> And I'm a teacher, and so he wants me to do a series on discipleship. And so this video is going to be on the topic of discernment. Um, this shouldn't be too long. The Lord gave me three points that he wants me to just lay out. So number one, he wanted me to define what is discernment. Discernment is simply hearing the voice of God. That's, it's just that, okay? Now, yes, there is the Trinity. And I'm not going to get into people arguing about the Trinity, which is just ridiculous. It's in Scripture. Um, but I will say that the Holy Spirit is the, shall we say, conduit or avenue through which we hear the voice of either Father God Yahweh or Yeshua. Now, if you go into the Old Testament, um, you will read in certain passages that it says that the Spirit of the Lord, or the Holy Spirit, came upon people, okay, because we were in the, um, well, let me phrase it this way, we were not in the New Covenant yet, because Yeshua had not died and risen yet, to give us the Holy Spirit yet, um, and so the Holy Spirit came upon people. Um, I believe it says that about David. Um, and then it also talks about the Holy Spirit leaving people, such as Saul. Okay? People uh, like to argue about whether or not you can lose salvation. Well, it says that the Holy it says that the Spirit of the Lord left Saul. So anyway, that's not the point of this video. But so again, point number one, let's define discernment. Discernment is simply hearing the voice of God. Okay? Um, so you have unbelievers who are not saved yet. Um, the Holy Spirit still does come upon people. So here now in the New Covenant, in the New Testament time frame, uh, the Holy Spirit can come upon people. Um, the Holy Spirit is still the conduit through which Father God Yahweh draws people. Okay, there is that verse that says that no one can come to the Father unless the Father draws them. He draws them through the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, I just lost my train of thought. Holy Spirit, will you please get me back on track right now, Lord? Where, where were we going after that? Um, right, right, right. Okay, and so once you, um, okay. I believe that I was told by God that everyone can hear Father God Yahweh's voice, okay? And so, um, and, and I, I, I know of some examples of this with people um, that people have shared with me. Um, and so I believe that no matter where you are at spiritually, or even like, even um, people that have like fallen angel DNA, even people now that have taken the, the mark, um, I believe that everybody can hear Father God Yahweh's voice, period. And so in that regard, you, you can say that um, the Holy Spirit is, um, you could say that, the, that there is Holy Spirit activity if someone is hearing Father God Yahweh's voice, okay? Um, although I do believe that that is um, more on the rare side in terms of like frequency of how often that happens okay and then once you become saved quote unquote once you receive Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth as your savior um, you then receive the Holy Spirit in you um, and that then is to guide you to go deeper to not just have Yeshua as savior but as Lord, okay? So the Holy Spirit does come upon people to convict people of their sin. 
So let's go backwards. So if someone is not saved yet, the Holy Spirit can come upon them. The F Father God Yahweh can speak to them and draw them through the Holy Spirit coming upon them. And they can be convicted of their sin um, through the Holy Spirit coming upon them. And that is what leads them to the point of the initial point of salvation, the initial point of, um, or, or, or the beginning of the process of salvation. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Lord, help me, please. The Holy Spirit comes upon someone to convict them of their sin, to be to uh, draw them through the conviction of their sin, and that is how then they receive Yeshua as their Savior. Okay. Now, once that happens, you receive the Holy Spirit, and so now the Holy Spirit isn't just upon you, the Holy Spirit is now in you. When the Holy Spirit is in you, it has more access to you. God has more access to you. And so... Um, there will be more conviction happening from that point. And whether or not that person hardens their heart to that conviction um, is ultimately what will determine whether or not they... Um, in How I put it is whether or not they're going to go into the Holy of Holies. When you first get saved, you are in the inner court. Outer court is when you're not saved. Inner court is when you've received Yeshua as your Savior. Um, and at that point, when the Holy Spirit is in you, you then um, have the opportunity to start repenting deeper and deeper and deeper and eventually, um, you know, making, like, to the point of making Yeshua Lord, surrendering every aspect of your life to Him, His will over yours, and that is how you get ushered into the Holy of Holies. And this is an analogy regarding the temple. The Holy of Holies is where the presence of God was, okay? Um... Once you're in that category, so to speak, that I believe is when you start hearing the actual voice of Yeshua through the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, that's a little deep, but um, I guess the Lord wanted me to get into that. So anyway, point number one, the definition of discernment is just hearing God's voice, okay? Number two, th the point that he wanted me to make, number two is recognizing God's voice. Um, quite often, you can mistake your own thoughts for the thoughts, or excuse me, for the, um, excuse me, quite often you can mistake the voice of God for your own thoughts. Um, because the Lord will speak, um, you know, I've even recently seen people claiming and even posting on YouTube that, oh, God doesn't speak that often, this, that, and the other. If you see anyone or hear anyone saying that, don't listen to them because that person is not as connected as they could or should be with God, okay? The Lord is speaking um, on a daily basis, okay? Um, the Lord loves relationship. He's all about relationship, okay? The definition of relationship is just a pattern of interaction between two parties. Um, the Lord is all about relationship. He's all about intimacy. He's all about having a conversation. Why would Paul tell us to be in unceasing prayer if it wasn't possible, okay? Unceasing prayer. What is prayer? Let's define prayer. Prayer is a conversation between you and God. You talk to him and you listen to him. So if it wasn't possible to hear God every day, all day, why would Paul tell us to be in unceasing prayer? Okay? So again, you got to take everything back to scripture. If you hear someone saying, oh, God doesn't speak that often, that person doesn't know scripture and that person doesn't have as intimate a relationship with the Lord as they could and should. Okay? So recognizing the voice of God, recognizing your own discernment, your own ability to hear the voice of God. The Lord's voice, as we know from scripture, is a still, small, quiet voice, right? Um, but you can often mistake it for your own thoughts. You know, um, we all know what it's like to just have a random thought pop in our head, right? Now, yes, some of that can also be from the enemy, and so you do need to distinguish, and that is part of um, discernment, is knowing how to recognize and distinguish between, okay, is this from God or is this from the enemy, okay? Um, 
what did Jesus tell us in scripture? He tells us that um, he gives us peace that the world does not give. Okay? Um, whereas the enemy, the enemy, um, his biggest tool is fear. Fear, shame, guilt, anxiety, which is just more extreme fear, fear okay? Um, all that kind of stuff. Apprehension, that's just another fancy word for fear, okay? Um, shame never comes from God. Guilt never comes from God, okay? Even when we're talking about conviction, okay? There's a difference between condemnation and conviction. Conviction is from the Holy Spirit. Conviction is just a gentle little nudge that says, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. Stop doing that. There's no shame involved. There's no guilt. Okay. When the enemy is accusing you, when the enemy is condemning you, being the accuser of the brethren, there is shame attached to it. There is guilt attached to it. There is a sense of just being unworthy attached to it. The Holy Spirit's conviction does not do that, okay? All right, so let's get back on track here. Number two, recognizing your own discernment. Um, so you can break discernment down even sometimes into, okay, there's words of knowledge, there's words of wisdom, there's prophesying, okay? Um, and I did a video a while back on the distinction between a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. Um, maybe I'll link that below. Um, I forget what I even said in that video. I think a word of wisdom is more of a warning. Um, I'll link that video below. Um, but recognizing your own discernment, um, the Lord will just pop something in your head and there will be no shame, excuse me, no shame attached, no guilt attached, no, no, no fear attached, no condemnation attached. It'll just be peace that what surpasses all understanding. Okay. It will surpass your emotions, your moods. It will surpass your comprehension. Um, that's how you recognize the voice of God. Okay. And then the third point that God wanted me to make is, um, to trust it, to trust your discernment. And this is an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process, especially for those of us who struggle with doubt, self-doubt, all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, especially those of us who are more analytical. <clears throat> Excuse me. Myself, being an INFJ, I'm very analytical. I'm always looking at everything from every possible point of view, um, which has its pros and cons. Um, learning to trust your discernment learning to trust that one you're recognizing God's voice you're hearing God's voice um, and just having that confidence in knowing what the Lord has told you having that confidence in the conviction that you're getting about something and conviction isn't just about your sin in terms of repenting conviction is Lord give me the words Conviction can also just be such a strong internal compass of just you know that you know that you know that you know that God is saying something. You know that you know that you know that you know that you're supposed to go this direction and not that direction. You know that you know that you know that you know that, you know that this is fact and that's a lie. This is truth and that's deception. Okay? Um, and so the more that you are able to recognize your discernment, recognize God's voice, um, distinguish it from the enemy's voice, and recognize it just throughout your day, every day, this is why Paul tells us to be in unceasing prayer because it's partially just practice. So that the longer you're walking with the Lord, the more confident you can be and the more you can be um, navigated by the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, the more that you can be walking in alignment with the Lord's will for your life, okay? Um, every decision you make, you should be conferring with the Lord. You should be taking every decision to Him and saying, Lord, what do you say? What is your will? Um, 
And there are definitely times where the Lord will kind of beat you to it before you even ask him and he'll just make it clear to you like this is this is the way, right? Thank you Holy Spirit. There's that verse that says that there will be a voice from behind you that says this is the way, walk in it, don't turn to the right or to the left, okay? I don't I don't remember exactly where all these verses are, but maybe I'll look them up and put them in the description box below for you. Um but yeah. Um those are the three points that the Lord wanted me to break down regarding discernment is define it, recognize it, trust it, okay? Discernment is simply just hearing God's voice, recognizing it, and trusting it. That is discernment in a nutshell, okay? And the longer that you are doing it and practice, the better you get at it, the more confident. And, you know, um, there are there are verses that talk about you know just having that confidence from God you know um, to approach the throne of grace with confidence you know um, so if you have any questions you know you're more than welcome to um, reach out in the comments or via email um, but that is the, that is that that is the teaching on discernment in the discipleship series that he wanted me to do. And if I forget anything, or if the Lord wants me to add anything else, I will put that in, in the description box below as well. So just again, a reminder, always check the description boxes of my videos. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth.